Hello. I'm just out here piddling. I'm just tinkering with this stuff. As you can see, I have drilled and tapped holes in this thing. All over. I got drilled and reamed quarter inch hole on this side, one off center here on this side, and set screws to lock both these in places. 5 16 studs, which I'm going to make a piece that goes on here that allows me to hold everything as a clamping block. One on this side for holding this stuff down, but the reason I wanted to do that this side will have a backstop on it. It's adjustable. And this side will have a your finger for doing for doing drill bits. I gotta back it out a little bit though. You have the backstop here so you can flip it. And I wanted to do it this way. Hopefully you can see it. I had the hole here for a backstop. It'll just have a clamping block, probably a piece of aluminum. It just clamps on it. This side holds a piece of hacksaw blade for indicating for a finger for sharpening drill bits and stuff like that. It'll lock in place. And I went with quarter inch because that's also the same size as my diamond dressing sticks are for the grinder. So I could pop that out, put the diamond dressing stick in, go across, dress the wheel, good to go. Then I could pop this back out, put the end mill sharpening fixture in, lock it, you're up and running again. I'll make some buttons and stuff to go plug these holes up when they're not in use so they don't get any grit or anything in this seat here or in this hole. But for now, that's what I've been tinkering with here. But, anyways, I was wanting to work on this. This is the backstop arm. I was going to make a clamping setup so it was split, and bore this out to one inch, and then add a screw to pull it together and clamp it. But there's not enough material. I kind of screwed up a little bit, and when I designed the pattern and I made it for the final part and didn't allow shrinkage allowances or anything like that and had to clean up a bit off that flashing so that screwed me so instead I'm just gonna drill in the top and add a thumb screw brass tipped to lock it to the shaft because I don't need super high torque to hold onto this thing because I'm not planning on wrenching back and just slamming it back. So, get this board out to one inch and we'll work on the micrometer dial on this side. I already got everything center punched, ready to go. I was... want a zero backlash setup like this, but this moves so freely I don't want the vibrations of the grinder to To move it on its own so I'm going to add a setup that has a bit of friction to it and allows me to lock it in place so this is going to be a little different design All right, let's go get started okay I got this chucked up just put it in the forge gel stuck the largest center drill I had in the box in the this chuck and ran it up right in the center just eyeballed it to get it centered up 
It doesn't have to be perfectly true, just as long as it's not too far out. I think I got it polished down enough. It's, <laughs> it's a nice tight fit right there. It's got about two thou clearance so it can free move. So now I gotta just drill and tap for a 3 8 grub screw on the top and we'll work on the micrometer adjust. Nice tight fit. Okay, it's nice snug fit. I think the ends are a little bigger than the middle from polishing it, but it's so minute of a difference that it just, yeah, and it's going to live right here anyhow, so it's never going to change diameter. I got a drill on tap for a 3 8 or 5 16 thread right here. This I got to drill out for 3 8 Then I'm going to put a pipe tap in it, an eighth inch pipe thread. Because the rest of the micrometer is going to be based off of that eighth inch microm or pipe thread. Pipe threads are actually tapered, so what I'm going to do is make a bronze collet with a quarter inch thread in it for the micrometer adjustment. Split it four ways, and when you tighten it down into the threads, it's going to close down, take up any backlash you have in it. Simple design. Adds a bit of friction to it, which is what I'm after, and then I'll have a stop nut that goes on top. For the collet though, I'm going to use bearing bronze. You could use brass, but it'll wear a lot faster. I don't want to use aluminum bronze because it's so stiff that the amount of tension this would have to be under would probably crack the aluminum to actually get it to flex. Aluminum bronze is very, very rigid and very stiff, so 
no good for this, but the aluminum bronze will work. It's probably the best choice that I have because it moves, it flexes the stuff how it needs to for the collets. It wears very easily and it's very slippery even when dry. So let's go get this chucked up in the lathe. We'll make the collet, turn it down to 3 8 step up to 7 16 and we'll cut the pipe tap thread on it to make the adjustment.
This is leaded bearing bronze. The stuff is so soft that it just... If you've ever played with free machining brass, this is probably softer. It is an absolute dream to machine. Nice thing about the two jaw chucks, like this old one, it it's two V jaws that so makes it really easy to hold taps and stuff, the square ends. Knock that loose. The stuff is pretty much self lubricating on its own, almost. That's real easy. Chop this off real quick and face the other end. Be good to go. Okay, this is what it looks like. It's just a weird split collet looking thing. Screws on the threads. As the two are tightened together, the, this tapered thread and this tapered thread socket, it tightens the thing up. So it eliminates all backlash. The threads are tight as they are, but they still freely move. As I tighten it down in a little more and more, it will take up any wear and actually add a little bit of stiffness to it. Still pretty free there. I'll add a little 16th inch hole, probably right here on the side for a little pin spanner to tighten the thing up. For now, they're starting to get a little stiff now. I like how that feels. So, now let's make a stop nut and we'll make the. It's just a protective nut to go over this to keep. The, to keep the grinding grit stuff out of the thread. It's just real simple. Well, we got this done up. I made a nut off camera. I had all intentions of recording it and yeah, it didn't turn out that well. The camera was acting up and everything I tried went bad found a piece of steel, ended up being 316 all stainless. Had a little chatter on the bottom, but it turned out okay. It's just a recessed nut. It's designed so that the recess actually bottoms out, or doesn't come in contact with the nut here for the split nut. And what it does, it tightens up on the top of the casting. It acts the jam nut that way. So I can adjust the height of the thing very precisely and then a little snug and that thing's not moving anywhere and then has no play in it because of being tightened up the split nut or a split call it yeah now when I'm grinding something I have a positive stop to go back to which is needed when you're grinding end mills and grinding the flutes and stuff of cutters.
We've got this done. We've got this mostly done. Looks pretty good. Now, let's work on the split pins or the cotter pins. We got snap gauge here. Just going to the bottom. Looks like about 745. So I'll go 743. That way it has clearance to slide. We get the brass here chucked up and start making our split pins. I'm gonna make this one and the one that goes in here. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna make the bushing for the back side here for the screw. Nice fit. Nice sliding fit, but not too tight. Viewers sent in a bunch of taps and drill bits and stuff. I've been using them like crazy, so you know who you are. Thank you for those. I really do appreciate all of them. Nice part about doing brass when you're dealing with the bearing bronze, a little bit of the lead gets in this and makes it super easy to machine. So, that's why I'm not worried about cross-contamination on stuff. Looks like we got our cutter pin blanked it up. Just chop it off. And drill it out.
slight counter bore into it. Just use the tap. It's got a sharp point at the top of the flutes. I don't need it all the way to the bottom, I'd rather not have it. So, we've got the cutter pin for this one made. We'll set this up. Start setting these up on the mill and we'll start cutting the slots in them. Okay, what I did is I stuck it in the hole and drew, drew on it with a sharpie marker to see what depth I needed. Which, I don't need to go very deep on this one. But, since it's just uh, threaded most of the way through, I have it set up on a 1-2-3 block, bolt running through all the way into it, and have the 1-2-3 block clamped down. That should be enough to do this up. Now we just slowly feed in and remove the material. be it. You want to remove just a little bit more because it will clamp. I've got a really dull drill bit here. I gotta resharpen this thing. It's having trouble even in the brass. But it'll keep it from grabbing. I wanna drill down just under halfway. Because the whole thing's threaded, so. That should be it there. Now just undo it, put the other one on, repeat. I'm not worried about messing up the one, two, three block. It's actually softer than jaws are. And I'm not tightening it up very tight just enough to grip it. There, that should be enough to do this up.
Okay, we've got that piece there. We've got the two pins or two halves here. Since I removed that much material, it's a uh, three sixteenths or three thirty seconds wide parting blade, so it removed that much material. Left a nice finish on it on the brass. Just put it in here. Okay, as you can see, two halves are have a split in them. When you pull it tight, it closes it up, locks the shaft in place. Okay, I just stuck a nut in there to bring it out a little bit. It's got plenty of thread engagement, but just even the slightest amount of snugging it up, it just it locks it really tight. And it'll wear in as it goes on because it, it's kind of loose now and I can't, I'm having a hard time tightening it up because there's not much to grab a hold of here. But it's on there solid now. Anything left to do is make that little tiny bushing there, which is going to be made of aluminum bronze. Which is real simple. That one's done. We got this one here. Thread that down in. Drop that down in place. Had to get the two halves lined up in there. And it's locked, it's not moving. That actually feels real good, so gonna make up this bushing in the back here. And we're gonna call it. Or I'm gonna call it. Okay, got this piece done up, it's a nice fit in there. I wanted this because it's very hard, the aluminum bronze is, and it, as it's being tightened up and stuff, it'll actually work hard and become even harder. So it will refuse to be wear, worn down. Now, I just got to make the studs and the hand wheels for everything. I'm going to make them up so they're extended out shaft a little bit and then go down the threads do it that way so I can get them up where I want them I think it's looking pretty good now I'm using aluminum bronze because yeah it is hard but all the places that vibration can really cause problems 
aluminum bronze is actually vibration dampening. So it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to act as a little bit of an isolation dampener or a little bit of a vibration dampener in between all the parts so that it not only protects it from wearing as fast but it also eliminates some of the chatter and stuff you'd find in the tools from being made out of cheap aluminum but yeah we now have the articulating arm set up all done the only thing left to do is make the hand wheels or the hand screws to do everything up and cut the graduations on this thing so I'm gonna wait on the thumb screws and stuff because I need some for the grinding head also so so now we got this part done I'll just make the little clamping block off camera because I'm not even sure how I want that done yet but we've got the ability to do dressing the wheel we can do drill bits now and we've got backstop arm done cotter pins are done now yeah quite a busy on this video anyways the only thing left now is to start working our way up so start working on the column next and start getting that done up and getting the grinding head made then we'll work on the base and start putting the whole thing together okay I'm gonna call it here I think I've made more than enough progress for now so Thanks for watching. See ya.